Hey, what's up? My name is Paul Russell, Parker the Third, and you also might know me as PRP3, the author, because I write books. Now, I only just don't write books. I also make videos about unboxings, um, reviews. I write articles. I vlog. I blog. I also like to talk about issues that I care deeply about. And one issue that I, I, is near the top of my list, if not the top, are veteran disability issues because I'm a veteran and I also have uh, service-connected disabilities. I served four years active, four years inactive in the Marine Corps, and I also fought in the 2003 invasion of Iraq, and I was injured throughout my four-year active duty tour of the military. So I like to tell people about issues that are affecting them, like how they're affecting me, and help people go through these issues and see if that can help solve some of their problems because I ran into a lot of problems myself that I needed help with and I like to pass on the information that I received. Now the purpose of this is I wanted to talk about how to service connect obstructive sleep apnea as a secondary disability to a primary disability of post-traumatic stress disorder. So from here on out I'm going to call obstructive sleep apnea either OSA sleep apnea or apnea, and I'm going to call post-traumatic um, stress, post stress disorder PTSD. So if you were like me, you were probably wondering how do you connect one to the other? You know, some people will have PTSD, and, and if you're not, if you don't have PTSD, you're not being affected by it, this is probably not the video for you or the podcast. So you need to go ahead and, you know, maybe you want to listen to help see if you can help someone else or you might want to check out some other video or podcast because I talk about other issues that might affect you personally so you're you're wondering what I was wondering how do you connect one to the other um, and I did it by having PTSD already service connected and being diagnosed with OSA after I got out of the military so how did I get them connected I went and had sleep studies done at a VA medical center and was given a diagnosis by the VA. Now, at that point, I could have done what a lot of other people do. I could have went and just went and um, applied for a disability compensation and as a primary. It would have been seen as a primary, but I would have just put a claim in and I would have got denied right away because they would have said, you know, well, where's the service records at? Where's you complaining? Where's your symptom? Where, where, where's any kind of record anywhere that says this happened or you were being affected by it while you were in the military? You know, it didn't matter if we as the VA diagnosed you with it and it was at one of our medical centers and it was our sleep study. Yeah, that could just be something that happened to you later on in life. If there's nothing that says that it was caused or it happened while you're in the military, there's nothing that we're going to approve. Even if you already have PTSD, you know, but it's too late because you already did primary, so it's going to be very hard to service connected as secondary. Now, you need to know kind of what a secondary service connected disability is. A secondary service connected disability is something that was caused and or made worse by or aggravated by a primary service connected disability. So let's say you have bad knees, 20 years later, you're having back issues, you can service connect your back issues as secondary to your knees, because your knees are service connected to primary from when you were in the military. That's what that is. Now, one issue that people run into, it even happened to me, was a VA Raider might say, okay, your service connected primary disability cannot cause your secondary service connected disability. It can't. It can't happen. You know, there's no way that, that can happen. Now, if you get if you get a denial based solely on it wasn't caused, you can have that ruling overturned and looked at again because they didn't address the second part of that sentence, and or cause. I mean, and or aggravated, and or made worse by. So, if they didn't address that, you can have them have it overturned and looked at by someone else. And often they can say, oh, that, that's a mistake. Um, it didn't cause it. But yeah, it, it, it makes it worse. It made it worse. It aggravated it. 
and then you can get it service connected that way. <clears throat> so you do need to kind of look at the terminology in the letters you receive, your denial letters, to, if you are getting the denial letter. So it's, like I said, the secondary is something that can be caused and or made worse or aggravated by. So that's what I did. I was service connected for, as a primary for disability, I mean for PTSD as a disability, and I wanted to connect my OSA to my PTSD. Now, how did I do that? Um, you know, I didn't really have to do any, too much because the, the records were there of my complaints of, you know, sleep issues. So the reason why I bring that up is with my PTSD, I had a lot of um, sleep disturbed breathing and sleep disturbed patterns because of my PTSD. I would roll around, thrash around. I have nightmares. I wake up early. I wake up in the middle of the night, can't go back to sleep. I go to sleep late. I have insomnia. You know, I have I have a lot of trouble sleeping, you know, peacefully and getting restful sleep because of that. So with OSA, that just makes OSA worse. Also, another thing is CPAP adherence. A CPAP is a machine, um, the co continuous positive airway path or pressure whichever it is, um, the machine you get, you put the mask on, or you get the nose one, and it continue pump, continuously pumps air that keeps your airway open so you can have restful sleep and not have the apneas where you're stopping breathing. And if you have PTSD, often your sleep pattern is just horrible, and that bad sleep pattern can aggravate or make worse your OSA. And the doctor looked at my records and said, you know what, all these different sleep patterns, you know, I, I'm, I'm thrashing around, I'm pulling my mask off, the machine's getting knocked off the, the nightstand, it's on the floor, I, I don't turn, put it back on sometimes, after, you know, I wake up and it's all, uh, I, I'm not adhering to my CPAP therapy, you know, that's another big issue. If you're not able to adhere to your CPAP therapy, your your treatment for your OSA because of your PTSD, that's another thing that links the two that shows that PTSD is making it worse or aggravating it because if you're not adhering to the therapy, you're not treating it, it's not getting better or it's not maintaining it in, in a way to where you can sleep comfortably, it, it's an issue that's um, service connectable. So that's how I did it. That The doctor said, um, all my different sleep patterns, you know, bother my OSA, makes it worse. Now, I did run into an issue that really no one else here is probably going to run into, but you could run into it with the VA Raiders. They may come at you and say, you know what, um, I was already service connected for PTSD, and I was granted service connection as a secondary for the OSA to PTSD, and that got me up to like 100%. Now, the problem was, as soon as I was service-connected, because one caused and or made it worse or aggravated the other, the VA Raider went and got another medical opinion, and the medical opinion they got said that, um, said that a physical condition cannot be caused by a mental condition. You know, there's no way that can happen. So I, I submitted supplemental claims, higher-level reviews. I tried to show that, hey, you said... It didn't cause, but you didn't address whether it could be made worse or aggravated. They came back and said, oh, yeah, um, you're right. We made a clear and unmistakable error. We, we didn't address that it was made worse or aggravated by, and we're sticking to our opinion that it cannot be caused and or made worse by or aggravated by your PTSD. So that happened, um, all these different denials. And finally, um, even with the new evidence I submitted, I finally had to go to a VSO to help me get my um, appeal ready to a VA law judge. The VA law judge saw the, inf the information that was sent and looked at all the evidence and said, hey, you know, you already had a medical opinion. Why did you go for the second? To the VA raider, not to me. Now, the v he, what, basically what the VA law judge was saying was, there's already a medical opinion. It wasn't based on fraud. I mean, it wasn't fraudulent. 
It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't factually inaccurate. It was an opinion, a valid opinion, a medical opinion, and it was a positive opinion. Why did you go, go, go look for another one? And the one you got was negative. Now, if you have a negative opinion and a positive opinion, you err on, on the side of the veteran with a positive opinion, which the VA rater did not. So there was two mistakes. They didn't err with, the, with me with a positive opinion, and they also sought another opinion when there was no reason to seek another opinion. So the um, VA law judge said, no, there is no reason for the surface connection to happen. I mean, there was a clear and unmistakable error. It was also another strange part where the VA law judge saw information from the VA raider that I didn't even see because I don't have access to the, you know, the amount of information they have in their systems, where the VA raider was saying that, you know, I had OSA before I joined the military, which there was no evidence. There's no records of it. And he, the VA law judge questioned the legality and the validity of that finding because he's like, there's no, or he or she, um, the, law, the law judge was like, no, I mean, what is that based on? There's no evidence. Like, how can you make that claim? So there were several issues that were found, but basically it was um, an error on their part, you know, and I was re-granted from the date of severance, you know, it was reinstated, my OSA is, as a secondary to PTSD, and, um, you know, I went back to 100%. So it can be done, even if, you know, people are telling you it can be done, especially the VA raiders are like, no, one can't cause the other, or, yeah, they can cause, I mean, they can't cause, but they they can't aggravate, or, you know, or you got a, a nexus letter from your doctor that's a valid medical opinion, you know, and then that, you know, they'll they'll weigh that at a compensation and pension exam with one of their VA um, appointed doctors, and if even if that doctor makes uh, an opinion that's negative, they still have the nexus letter from your doctor that should show, you know, a positive opinion that that the VA rear should go with. So it can be done, and it probably is more easier done, you know, than than it's been led on because a lot of people think it's really hard to get it service connected, but it didn't take me more than a five minute interview with a doctor at the CMP exam to get service connected. It took a lot of work to keep it and get it reinstated, but it didn't take a lot of work to get it service connected because it, one can make worse the other. You know, it didn't have to cause it. There, there. I'm a, I wasn't claiming that my PTSD caused my apnea. I just claimed that it was making it worse. It was aggravating it. I'm not getting good CPAP therapy, CPAP adherence, which is a thing you can look it up. You can Google CPAP adherence in combat veterans with PTSD, and you'll find scholarly, you know, medical journal articles discussing this issue that a lot of veterans, not just combat veterans, but veterans in general with PTSD have in having in having good, real CPAP therapy adherence and treatment. So yeah, you know, if, if you want a service connected, now you may um, pursue another way to do it, but make sure that you're, you know, you have some records to back it up and it, it, it is real and it's factual. And if you can get a nexus letter, that's really good. If you can go to a VSO and have them look at it and make sure it's awarded correctly, that's good too. You know, so don't give up and don't don't make the mistakes I, I made with other disabilities where I tried to put something in as a primary, which should have been secondary, or I believed in like the the initial denial letter. Sometimes you find that if you do a higher level review or a supplemental claim, they'll get changed pretty quickly. You know, so not every disability is denied the second time. Some are, I mean, some, if, the, if you don't have it or you don't have proof of it, it doesn't matter if it really did happen, you know, it won't get service connected. So, you know, I hope this helped you and it, it may give you an idea what you can do to get yours connected and whatnot. And I have other videos and podcasts so you can kind of go through and see other issues that might affect you and like and subscribe and 
keep following and coming back for more. I appreciate it.